Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now, while planning your financial journey and building a corpus, it's important not only to focus on what to do, but also to make sure what to not do or what to avoid. Now, this is a market which is cluttered with financial products and schemes, but we are here to demystify it for you and make your investment journey smoother. Today, we talk about five things to avoid in your financial journey. Our expert is Keetan Shah. He's the founder and CEO at Credence Wealth Advisors. Keetan, thanks a lot for joining in. You know, let's get straight to it, right? I've put down five or six things that one should be avoiding in your investment journey and I wanted your thoughts on it. So uh, the first important tool that we're looking at is to never mix insurance and investment. Now, what I mean by this is when you mix an insurance and an investment product together, you end up paying heavy charges for your insurance scheme along with suboptimal earnings returns in your investments. Now, the two schemes which are a strict avoid, according to me, are ULIPs and endowment or money back plans. So let's first talk about that endowment plans, ULIPs, why you should be avoiding it. Uh, Keetan, you know, jump in on this um, there are a lot of these schemes which are sold to investors and are sort of sold with this promise of great returns and insurance but just put that myth or demystify it for us why should one not mix insurance and investment um, hi Sonia thank you so much for having me on the show Sonia uh, the prime reason why insurance policies are sold as uh, uh, investment instruments is because they tell you that the maturity is going to be tax-free and on that uh, you get insurance which is an add-on like you rightly said it's the it's the biggest mistake that somebody would end up making in the investment journey to try and mix both of these together and a couple of reasons why so look uh, the traditional policies are very different from how a unit operates so traditional policies are policies in which uh, you know, uh, there is low volatility. They tell you that if you invest a lakh of rupee today, probably you will receive two and a half lakh rupees after 20 years. Or they tell you or give you a very clear direction of what kind of cash flows can you can you expect from this investment. Now, the tricky part here is, Sonia, that while these insurance policies bundled with uh, investments are sold to us, uh, nobody in this space talks to you about the XIRR or the return that you will make on the product. They very smartly bundle it saying that you invest a lakh today and you will get two and a half lakhs after 20 years. Uh, somebody who does the basic math will understand that this is four and a half, five percent. Now, most of these products, uh, specifically the traditional side of the products, right? The ones that you highlighted, the endowments and the money backs, they don't end up making you anything more than five, six percent on a higher side. So while you talk about investing in this product, there is no investment case because you're not making great returns. Now let's talk about do you actually even get insurance or not. So typically uh, the rule says that whatever premiums you are paying, 10 times of those premiums is what your summer shot ha has to be. Only then your maturity is going to be tax free. So what all of these uh, products typically do is if you paid a lakh of rupee of uh, premium, they'll give you a 10 lakhs of summer shot. Now for somebody who's paying a lakh of rupee of premium, 10 lakhs is actually not a great summer shot in itself. So what typically happens is while you invest in these products, neither do you make higher returns, nor do you actually get covered in terms of insurance because the insurance is too low. Now, the reason why they keep the insurance low is because let's say if you're investing a lakh of rupee, right? The higher your age is, the higher of that one lakh rupee gets allocated towards giving you insurance. So let's say if you're 30 years old, some random numbers, one out of that one lakh, 10,000 will be kept aside to give you that insurance cover. But if you are slightly older, you're 50 years old, so that 1 lakh rupee, from that 1 lakh rupee, 25,000 will be kept aside to give you that sum assured, which means that higher your age is, right, or more the sum assured that you are opting for, less amount of money is allocated towards investments and hence the returns even fall further. Now, along with this problem, another bigger problem, Sonia, in this case is there is hardly any liquidity, right? So uh, while you invest in traditional products specifically, if you get out of the traditional products before the maturity, what they pay you back is hardly anything. Uh, nine out of 10 cases, uh, you go to the insurer and tell the insurer that I want my money back. And th if this is uh, prior to maturity, the surrender value paid to you is 40, 50, 60% of what the fair value you actually deserve. So neither do these products have liquidity, nor do these products make you higher returns. And also being an insurance product, it does not give you a very high insurance. Right? So this is a big problem with investing in traditional policies. Now, if I have to talk to you about ULIPs in specific, 
you know uh, the you know, only Keetan, difference between traditional policies and Keetan, ULIPs is that ULIP typically allows you to also take exposure to equity. In fact, right. in fact, so Keetan, I want to just, uh, you know, I want to just take a breather there because I want to talk a little bit more in detail about ULIPs. So let me first tell our viewers what exactly ULIPs are for the uninformed and then I'll come to you. Uh, now, investors should strictly avoid ULIPs and that's my view and I'm sure that's Keetan's view as well. So ULIPs or unit linked insurance plans are products that combine insurance and investment components. Now, investors should also avoid, of course, endowment and money back policies. But the problem with ULIPs and endowment policies is that no great insurance coverage and there is suboptimal return. So once again, you know, coming back to that, but uh, Keetan, tell us what is the key difference between ULIPs and endowment plans and why should one strictly avoid ULIPs? See what happens on the traditional side of the policy and endowment in case that we are discussing is that uh, you are largely given a very clear understanding that this is the kind of money you can expect when you stay invested. Because largely all of that investment happens in the fixed income and you are never given a choice to choose between asset classes uh, while you invest in endowment. ULIP is a market link product. So when you invest in a ULIP, you ideally can choose between either wanting to invest in equity fund or a debt fund or a hybrid. And it also allows you to switch between these funds. So you might start off with investing in equity and then probably for some reason you might want to switch to debt or hybrid and you are free to do that. So ULIP is largely a market link product, which is not really the larger case with endowment. Now, the problem with ULIP is amongst the other things that we already spoke about in general, which are problems with uh, with insurance as an investment product. But in ULIPs, you have a five-year lock-in, which is another problem. Also in ULIPs, most cases, the cost of uh, investing in ULIP is very high, right? So when you invest in a mutual fund, you pay an asset management fee right or a TER but while you invest in an insurance policy you pay a premium allocation charge you pay a policy admin charge you pay mortality cost and fund management fee and like I was explaining on the endowment side as well that if your age is higher right a larger part of your investment is taken away to give you some assurance so while you are trying to invest in a ULIP in terms of investment you will have to compulsorily buy an insurance right even if you don't want and out of the 1 lakh rupee, the example that we are discussing, depending on your age, a larger sum is removed out of that 1 lakh rupee compulsorily to give you an insurance because ideally it's an insurance product. Okay, got that. That was very well explained actually. Uh, so that's the case against ULIPs and traditional policies and why you should never mix investment and insurance. Got that. Let's now go to the next thing you should avoid, right? Sectoral or thematic investing and why that should be avoided. So here is a case. Uh, uh, you know, to uh, to sort of explain to you why you shouldn't invest in thematic or sectoral funds. Now, they are simply funds which invest in a theme, any theme. It could be renewable energy, it could be in a particular sector, say infrastructure. Now, these funds are high risk, high return strategies. Timing is very crucial. It's a crucial element of investing in these categories. If you get the timing wrong, your returns can be extremely lumpy. This also defies the purpose of diversification and can add a lot of concentration risk because what you are primarily doing is investing in one particular space. Now, whether that sector does well, doesn't do well, you're not, you know, you're putting all of your eggs in one basket and hence perhaps you should avoid it. Uh, Keetan, come in on this. Do you recommend any kind of sectoral or thematic funds or would you agree with me that this is, you know, a place a retail investor should avoid? Uh, Sony, I think you've covered the points very well. I think retail investors largely, in my opinion, should avoid thematic funds or sectorial funds. Thematic or sectorial funds can be a very good proposition for, let's say, a sophisticated investor who can actually time the market cycle really well. Now, we can go back and see how metals went through a rally or probably pharma and IT went through a rally uh, during the COVID, right? We probably are currently seeing how banks are going through a rally. But while you invest in a particular sector, right, like you rightly pointed out, first, what you're doing is defining the uh, uh, reason or the purpose of doing these investments, which is diversification. So when you invest in a particular sector, you're largely putting a lot of concentration risk, right? And typically, these sectors are cyclical or the returns are very lumpy. So if you are not able to get out of these funds at the right time, right, you probably might end up losing all the returns that you would have made over a period of time investing in that particular sector. So while sophisticated investors who can, you know, actually time the market 
and understand when to enter and exit can surely look at investing in thematic or sectorial funds because it definitely makes you a lot of alpha over a diversified fund if you've been able to time it well but for retail investors uh, it's a strict avoid in my opinion because you are actually missing out on the logic of diversification for which you are you are investing and hence a diversified fund would do a better job on a risk adjusted basis than than investing in a thematic or a sectorial fund Okay, you do know, right, that we could get a lot of backlash for this from our mutual fund fraternity because a lot of people are coming out with thematic funds, sectoral funds lately. But it is what it is. I mean, we're just trying to put out the risks there for our viewers, investors, so that, uh, you know, they make the right investment decisions. So, there's are two things that you should avoid. One is, uh, you know, keep investment and insurance separate. And the second is avoid thematic funds. Let's do one thing. Let's take a short break, but don't go anywhere. We have uh, three or four more things that you should be avoiding in your investment journey. We'll come back with that. Hundred percent happiness.